I freaking love giant robots. I don't think there's anything in the world that I love more than giant robots. There is nothing in the entire world that gets me more aroused than giant robots. Mmm, punch the shit out of that kaiju. And that's what made 2012 Pacific Rim so special to me. Not only was it a film about giant robots, it was a good film about giant robots. Directed by Gu Gu Guillermo... Grill, grill, Pacific Rim fulfilled all of these desires by delivering a fun, action-packed film featuring plenty of giant robots beating the shit out of giant monsters. Pacific Rim is a pretty good movie. Its sequel, Pacific Rim Uprising, is... It's not a pretty good movie. When I first saw the trailers for this film, I knew I wasn't going to be happy. And when I finally saw it... Man, I, I was not happy. They were basically like, hey, let's make a Pacific Rim movie, but with kids. No one no one has ever done that yet, and man, that was a great movie. Welcome to Ruin Forever, the series in which I take a look at things within a particular franchise that have been generally hated by most, and have left an ugly scar upon a once great franchise. Pacific Rim was a movie I always said didn't need a sequel. I'm upset to announce that I was right. My experience watching Uprising was quite the emotional roller coaster. At first I hated it, midway through I was totally into it, and then by the end I just went back to hating it. And now I feel very apathetic toward it. I want to like it, but there's just so much wrong with it that I feel like I can't. It's not an awful movie, but it's not a very good Pacific Rim movie. A lot of people have said that it looks like a Transformers movie, and if that is the case, then it's my favourite Transformers movie. I kind of feel like this one took a massive dump in the original, so I went back and watched the original Pacific Rim just to clarify. And I gotta admit, the original's not the absolutely perfect holy grail like I once thought it was, but it was still a damn good movie. And Uprising, it's... It's not. There's been quite a few interesting points of discussion when comparing these two movies and talking about why Uprising didn't live up to the success of its predecessor. So let's go through these categories one by one. Starting with... Today we are cancelling the apocalypse! Though the mechs are the biggest attraction, Pacific Rim managed to have some pretty good main characters for us to follow during their struggles against these kaiju. Pacific Rim 1 had sexy blonde boy and his brother that became kaiju food, Mako Mori, his co-pilot who had a lot of development throughout the film, Staka Pentecost, the ex-pilot and commander of the entire operation, a bunch of cannon fodder, and the Australians who were very stereotypically Australian. Oi mate! Oi hey mate! Push some shrimp on the barbie mate! Pacific Rim Uprising decided that it would rather be a Power Rangers movie instead of a good movie, and the film uses the excuse of cadets to fill its utterly brilliant cast of characters, who received next to no development, with a bunch of incredibly annoying teenagers. You can interpret this as a reference to most mecha anime by having kids pilot the robots, but let's not kid ourselves here, it's all about that dough! The reason a teenage protagonist in anime works is because they aren't super edgy wisecracking pieces of shit. I mean, are they as bad as Shinji? Well, maybe? Most people claim that the main character in Uprising, Jake Pentecost, son of the other Pentecost, who was never mentioned in the first movie by the way, was a pretty good lead. He was played by the guy who had a rather large part in the recent Star Wars films. For the uninformed, he voiced BB-8. Jokes aside, I'd have to agree with that statement. I actually liked him more than Raleigh in the first film, My who was God. honestly a bit of a... <laughs> Dull character, aside from the obvious. I waited the whole damn movie for Raleigh to show up, but he's entirely absent from the movie. At the very least, they give his name a mention, but the rest of the film acts as if he doesn't exist. Mako shows up, though, for a whole of 10 minutes, and doesn't even pilot a Jaeger, though she does explode quite violently and die. So there's that. Good, good work, guys. The young girl who takes center focus in the movie, Amara, was a character that Uprising attempted to give development to, but failed miserably. It's interesting to contrast her and Mako from the first film, simply because the two have a very similar character concept. In the original Pacific Rim, we get a glimpse into Mako's past via the Drift, and incidentally, the origin story between her relationship with Staka. We get to see the impact this war has had on her life, why she fights, and why she is how she is. In Uprising, they try to do the same with this girl, but it just... Ugh. We get an honestly hilarious scene of her as a young girl at the pier with her parents, and then a kaiju comes out of the water and kills her parents in an abrupt and seemingly comedic way. Why anyone would be out on a pier near the ocean where there are giant monsters known to come out of them is beyond me, but the scene just didn't have nearly as much impact as Mako's. It was just pathetic in comparison, and, as I said, came off more hilarious than sentimental. I'm not going to act like the cast of characters in the original Pacific Rim were some of the most complex and interesting characters out there, but the film at least bothered to explain their motivations and give them development. Uprising doesn't. It just introduces these characters and offers a half-assed attempt at resolving the conflicts they introduce, and then the movie ends. It sucks. 
This movie sucks. The pacing and uprising is practically non-existent, and whatever semblance of character development this film has suffers for it. The film doesn't dedicate nearly enough time to introduce and develop the cadet characters for the audience to get used to them, so their presence in the film comes out as rather questionable and very, very forced. Honestly though, the characters, especially the irritating as hell teenagers, are so insufferable that I'm grateful we didn't have to spend any more time with them. And look, not to get into nitpicky territory, but one of the biggest complaints from people about Uprising was how incredibly different all of the new Jaeger designs are. I'm being sarcastic. They all look the goddamn same! In the first Pacific Rim, we had ample time dedicated to the audience getting used to each of the four main Jaegers in the film. Even if most of them only lasted two seconds. And so we were able to tell them and their pilots apart. But in Uprising, we get the annoying girl just shout out all of their names within two seconds and we're supposed to remember them. Alrighty. This is what has caused so many people to draw parallels with Transformers, aside from the annoying kids and inappropriate humour. The Jaegers in the first film stood out. While in Uprising, they all look incredibly similar and are honestly only distinguishable by colour. They look like the freaking robots in Mac 2. I personally love Gypsy's new design, but by making them these sleeker and smaller designs, what they also sacrificed was the weight that the Jaegers in Pacific Rim 1 had. You could feel the power in every blow. And while the battles in Uprising are still a spectacle to watch, they just lack the originality that the first film had. Also, the names are really dumb. Like... Really, really dumb. A lot of people are quick to dismiss the first Pacific Rim as being a big dumb action movie with a big dumb plot. And that's fine if you want to look at it like that. But I quite like the original's plot. It was simple enough to accommodate the big dumb action that I'm sure we all unanimously agree was the best part about it. I think the plot was pretty ingeniously designed to be simplistic and easy to follow so as to have reason for the big dumb robot punching. Basically, Earth gets invaded by Godzillas. Humans make Gundams to fight them. Sexy blonde boy and his sexy blonde boy brother are pilots and go to fight Godzilla in their Ava unit, and sexy blonde boy's brother gets eaten. Ten years later, Nick Fury comes to find him and asks him to join the Avengers, and then he meets his co-pilot Bumblebee, they kill some more Godzillas, and then everyone except sexy blonde boy and co-pilot die after they blow up a hole in the ocean. Pretty simple. I think it's pretty disrespectful to completely ignore all of the work that went into the rest of the movie just because the fights are the main attraction. Yes, I'm here for the action scenes, but I'm not just going to neglect the work that went into a story that allowed for the fights. This is the opposite case for Uprising though, because that entire movie needs to be neglected. Uprising, in contrast, was a weird mess of a plot that had the utmost worst pacing I've ever seen in a movie since Transformers The Last Knight. And that movie made no freaking sense. Pacific Rim Uprising had a lot of really cool ideas for the plot. The way they reintroduced the kaiju I felt was handled really well instead of being all like, Hey guys, the breach is open again! <laughs> and the drone Jaegers being taken over by the kaiju blood and becoming these evil Jaeger kaiju hybrids was deliciously Evangelion. On top of that, you have a really cool reason for two Jaegers to fight each other, with Obsidian Fury being controlled by a kaiju brain. And, of course, the Mega Kaiju at the end of the film being created by combining three Kaiju was freaking awesome. There were plenty of points in Uprising where I felt the same giddy feeling I had when watching the original Pacific Rim for the first time. This movie's inspirations are on clear display, and the film plays a nicer match to them by setting the final battle in Tokyo, even going as far to show a statue of the Unicorn Gundam. Please make a live-action Gundam movie, I've been waiting so long. There were a lot of really awesome concepts thrown around throughout the movie that are perfect for Pacific Rim. But unfortunately, there were also a lot of really stupid ideas that were thrown around. Hey, maybe we should explain that the kaiju are actually going towards Mount Fuji the entire time. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Then why were they in San Francisco? No, listen, they were going to Mount Fuji the entire time. Oh, hey, suddenly these kids are better at piloting the Jaegers than freaking anybody. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Okay. Oh, yeah, and in the final battle, only one of them will die out of the freaking horde of them that have never piloted a Jaeger before. We're gonna drown in money. Then they actually did. Newt, a pretty major character from the first film, made a reappearance, but ever since he drifted with the kaiju in the original, his mind has been slowly corrupted by the precursors, the aliens that make and send the kaiju, and so he serves as the main antagonist of the film. That is an awesome idea. Having a 15-year-old girl drift seamlessly with Jake after the two only drifted once throughout the entire movie, that... N no. It wasn't that the story was necessarily confusing or nonsensical, instead more the fact that the movie moved at 100 miles an hour. I honestly quite liked the second half of the movie, but it was riddled with a bunch of stupid and annoying crap that made watching it feel more like a chore. Uprising was already at a disadvantage from the first film, as it could no longer entirely rely on <sighs> giant robots to carry the entire movie. I mean, the giant robots were still really cool, but that's essentially all Uprising had going for it. The concept that it briefly touches upon in its world that has changed after 10 years from the first film were quite interesting. But unlike the first Pacific Rim, which had the side plot of Newt going to the kaiju black market, Uprising doesn't do much world building. And all we really have is the, admittedly cool, concept of people building unofficial Jaegers. A teenage girl building one though? 
Yeah, no. And look, I'll admit, I had a stupid grin on my face during most of the action scenes. The Jaeger battles, especially the one with Gypsy Avenger and Obsidian Fury, were really awesome. And the CGI was fantastic. For those who only look at these films as dumb movies where big robots punch evil aliens, then yeah, Uprising will scratch that itch for you. But for me, who love the original film, I felt like Uprising was an insult to the original. I don't know why that surprised me though when the trailer was like this. Hey, should we use that really awesome song we have? What one? The one that goes... Nah, don't worry, we'll just stick in some shitty hip-hop song. What about that really awesome theme though? Well, Uprising didn't totally forget about it. No, they threw it in some shitty enforced montage at the end of the movie. All in all, Uprising had quite a few appreciated ties to the original, and that was quite obvious. Obviously, someone working on this movie gave a crap about keeping continuity and elements consistent with the first film and the lore introduced into it. And of course, the robot fights were still awesome. But unfortunately, the rest of Uprising was filled with so much unnecessary garbage that it just drags the film down too much for the other elements to save it. I liked a lot about this movie, specifically a lot of the concepts relating to the plot, but it felt like it put more emphasis on being a comedy movie than an action movie. Subsequently, the film feels really commercialized in that sense. As a result, it wasn't so much the plot of Uprising that ruined Pacific Rim, but instead the tone. <laughs> Pacific Rim now joins the list of movies with its tone completely ruined by an excessive amount of poorly timed and unfunny jokes. Hollywood, please stop doing this. The characters in the film are the last defense for humanity and are about to be wiped out by a bunch of giant kaiju jaegers. We don't need a freaking sex joke. It's not great to have a film that takes itself too seriously, but a joke has to be earned. And in the middle of an action scene where the tension in the scenario is supposed to be felt by the audience, don't break the immersion just because some guy in the writing room watched an episode of Family Guy and thought it would be funny. And I am very upset to find myself discovering this about most movies I go to see nowadays. The tone of the film is completely broken by way too many poorly timed jokes. Whoever decided to put in the freaking 2012 troll meme in the movie is probably the same brain dead idiot who thought the what are those joke in Black Panther was funny. What are those? Hello darkness my old friend. It is baffling that they would put in such an incredibly unfunny gag. It's like in the middle of Infinity War with a confrontation with Thanos and suddenly Spider-Man pulls out his phone and is playing the freaking Harlem Shake or some shit. Hollywood, stop doing this. It's not funny and it will never be funny. Still not as bad as Atlantic Rim. I can't believe this is a real thing. <laughs> Just so that begs the question, is Pacific Rim ruined forever after Two movies. <laughs> well, I mean, mm, I'd have to say no. <laughs> Pacific Rim Uprising did not feel very Pacific Rim. The first and second film share only very small elements, and I still stand by my point that the original Pacific Rim did not need a sequel. But I guess the big dumb robot movie got a big dumb robot movie sequel, so whatever, right? When I came out of the cinema, my very first instinct was, What the hell do they do to my favorite movie? What have you done? But at the very least, Uprising nailed the most important part of Pacific Rim. That being the giant robot fights. And so, for me, the second film is most certainly just a mindless but passable Power Rangers movie. Long story short, it could have been worse. Shut, shut up, shut. Shut up! I don't hate this film, and I do feel there were a lot of really awesome elements in it that were squandered by the asinine decision to replace the cast with unlikable kids. I didn't want this movie to be made for the exact reasons that turned out to disappoint me. Admittedly, they did work around the plot idea very well, but there's just so much stupid shit in this film that has no place in a sequel to Pacific Rim. The ending of Uprising, of course, in the typical Hollywood franchise attempt, sets up the sequel in which Jake claims that he and the other pilots are going to bring the fight to the precursors. This idea is what I originally envisioned for a sequel to Pacific Rim, and I'm really glad they're running with it. It would be awesome to see a Pacific Rim movie with that kind of plot, with the Jaegers doing battle with the Kaiju in their home planet. Issue is, I, I really don't want to see a third Pacific Rim movie done in the same style as Uprising. Probably put in Gangnam Style. As I said, Uprising did have a lot of really good qualities within it that, if allowed to take center stage, could make for a fantastic movie. So this is my message to whoever is handling the third Pacific Rim movie. If you want to do it, fix the pacing, f*** the humour, f*** the kids. Wait, no, 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 put Godzilla in it.
Boom, most successful movie of all time. I do want to see this franchise succeed because the original film was brilliant. And hopefully the filmmakers learn from their mistakes if they plan to pursue a third installment. But for now, Pacific Rim truly is ruined. Until they make a third movie.